If you look on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist, you'll find all kinds of utility sheds, garages, small cabins, and tiny homes for sale. Lots of them are very good deals. How do you move it? You want to buy it, but it's 30 miles away. You have no idea how to get it home. Well, I've moved a couple of these. This particular one is a 12 by 16. I'm going to give you a couple of tips and tricks that I've learned on how to move these sheds. I can tell you the number one tip is do not use a normal car floor jack. You want to use a bottle jack, a jack that's going to jack straight up. My second best tip, in order to move these, depending on what state you're in, you may have a height limit on how to go down the road. Get a four place snowmobile trailer. Hopefully you can borrow one from someone or maybe a local rental company has one. They're about eight feet wide, they come 20 feet long, and they're only about 20 inches high off the ground. So I'm gonna show you a couple different ways on how to raise these buildings up and drive a trailer right underneath them. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get the shed up off the ground. If it's been setting a while, it could be three to four inches into the dirt. So I prefer to dig underneath all four corners. You're gonna dig about 14 inches wide, maybe about 20 inches long. And this would be the only spot that I ever use a car floor jack. Car floor jacks don't actually raise and lower perfectly straight, but they do work good just to get these broke loose from the ground. So you're gonna get your car floor jack underneath it after you've dug down about eight inches, jack up all four corners, put some blocks under it, and then depending on how big it is, well this one's 16 feet long. Any longer than that, then I would jack up with two jacks, but this one I can actually jack in the center. We'll jack it up, start putting blocks under it, and go back and forth from side to side. Now if you have another guy, you can also jack from both sides at the same time. You can maybe use your cell phone, talk to each other as you pump the jack up and try to keep the building level. If you're doing this by yourself, where you're doing one side, then going to the other side, do not raise the building more than four inches at a time. It can get a little bit skewed, and it can fall off your blocks. So I can raise the entire side of this building with this small little bottle jack. This is an eight-ton jack. I'll put a link in the description below on how to buy these off Amazon. They're fairly cheap, they work extremely well, and they're going to jack the building up nice and straight. Now what do you use for support? I prefer these 18 inch square patio blocks. I've got a couple of these just retaining blocks. I kind of work my way up and I'll keep adding patio blocks. But you want a nice big solid base to start with. If you have 4x4s, uh, you're going to want to maybe cut those two feet long and you can kind of square those out and build your way up. But these big solid patio blocks work the best for me. So as you can see, after about two and a half hours, I have the building about 26 inches off the ground. I'm gonna go walk up next to it so you can take a look at my knees and then you can see kind of the height difference. I'm six foot four, so you should be able to tell as I walk up next to it. Now another tip I can give you, on each side of the building, I like to have three places for supports. This one here is just kind of a backup, but my two ends are nice and solid. I also have that on the other side, and in the back, I also have one of these. So total supports on this building, I got three on this side, three on the other side, and one stack in the back center. So we have a four place snowmobile trailer coming tomorrow and we're simply gonna back it right underneath the shed. We'll jack up one side of the shed, remove the blocks, lower it down onto the trailer, do the same thing on the other side, and it's gonna be on the trailer and ready to move. Now, once we pull it out into the yard, we'll strap it down. We'll actually put some blocks on the trailer and we'll screw down through the deck of this into the trailer. We don't want this to fall off for sure. We also put some straps all the way around the top of the building. You want to make sure this is really secure. And then, depending on how your local laws are, you're going to want to make sure that you're not too wide and you're not too tall for your state and local highways. Hope this video helps you guys, and thanks for watching.